Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ken Espinosa and welcome to Chapter 3 entitled Science, Technology, and Nation Building. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapter? One, to explain how early Filipinos applied scientific principle in their daily living. Two, present government policies on science and technology and explain their importance to the nation. And lastly, discuss the role of science and technology in nation building. So here we'll be talking about major contributions during pre-colonial period, colonial period, and post-colonial period in the Philippines. First, let's talk about the pre-colonial period. The history of science technology in the Philippines started way back before the country gained independence from the American colonizers. Before the coming of the Spaniards colonizers, the early inhabitants of the archipelago had their own culture and traditions. They had their own belief systems and indigenous knowledge systems that keep them organized and sustain their lives and communities for many years. Scientific and technological development in the Philippines began in the pre-colonial period. Even before the Spaniards came in the Philippines, the early Filipinos were already possessed their own culture and technology. They were already using plants as medicine and they were aware of the medicinal and therapeutic properties of plants and the methods of extracting medicines from the herbs, which address the problems in health. They're known as albulario in Filipino, herbolario in Spanish, and herbalist in English. During pre-colonial period, system of farming and animal raising were also implemented. They raised chicken, pigs, goats, carabaos, and small native ponies. They also used bow and arrow for fishing and hunting. Scientific knowledge is observed in the way they plant their crops that provide them food in taking care of animals to help them in their tasks. This also addresses the problems in terms of mass production in food supply. Moreover, early Filipinos had also developed different modes of transportation. Early Filipinos were said to be proficient in building ocean-going vessels, which addressed the problems in terms of transportation. One of the greatest contributions of early Filipinos to science and technology was achieved by the native cordilleras when they built the rice terraces by hand. Through this, the early Filipinos were able to cultivate crops on the mountainsides in cold temperature. They incorporated an irrigation system that uses water from the forests and mountain tops to achieve farming system. This addressed the problem in mass production in terms of food supplies. This showed that early Filipinos can actually innovate a farming system in order to survive in relation to unfriendly environment. Today, the Philippines is the 8th largest rice producer in the world, accounting for 2.8% of global rice production. Also, Philippines was also the world largest rice importer in 2010. Now proceed to the colonial period. Colonization by the Spaniards provided the Philippines with modern means of construction such as the walls, roads, bridges, and other infrastructures that can be seen mostly in the Intramuros Manila, Tayabas Quezon, such as the Malagolong Bridge and other old Catholic churches located in the different areas in the Philippines. The Spanish introduced a formal education through parish school. They brought with them their own culture and practices. They established schools for boys and girls and introduced the concept of subject and disciplines. It was the beginning of formal science and technology in a country known as School of Science and Technology. Religion, reading, writing, arithmetic, and music were taught. Scientific institutions were established, sanitation and advanced method of agriculture were taught to the natives. The Spanish established colleges and universities in the archipelago. 
the study of medicine in the Philippines was given priority and contributed to the field of engineering in the island. However, the Spanish government developed exclusive health and educational systems that were only enjoyed by the upper class or principalia class. Trade is given more focus by the Spanish colonial authorities due to the prospect of big profits. Agriculture and industrial development, on the other hand, are neglected. But science during the American occupation modernized almost all aspects of life in the Philippines. This period is toward agriculture, food processing, medicine, and pharmacy due to free trade policy with the United States, which nurtures the economy towards agriculture and trade. Moreover, the Americans have more influence in the development of science and technology in the Philippines compared to Spaniards. They established the public educational system, improved the engineering works and health conditions of the people. They established modern research university, such as the University of the Philippines, Philippine Normal School, now Philippine Normal University, Manila Business School, now Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila Trade School, now Technological University of the Philippines, and created more public hospitals such as Philippine General Hospital or PGH. Lastly, let's now move on to the post-colonial period. After achieving independence from the colonizers, the Philippines under different administration continued to pursue programs in science and technology. Its leadership had its own science and technology agenda. However, it is important to note that some Philippine presidents posted more development in the field than others. One of the presidents who ushered in advancement in science and technology was former President Ferdinand Marcos. Under his term, many agencies in science and technology were established and strengthened. During Ferdinand Marcos' two terms of presidency and during martial law, he had enacted many laws promoting science and technology. The advancement of science and technology had been the priority in the national government. It was in Marcos' time when pioneering hospitals were built, such as the Philippine Heart Center, Nang Center of the Philippines, and the National Kidney and Transplant Institute. Moreover, on July 12, 1980, the country's President Ferdinand E. Marcos created the Light Rail Transit Authority, or LRTA, as a government agency. The chairman was then the First Lady and Governor of Metro Manila, Imelda Romualdez Marcos. This LRTA confined its activities to determining policies, to the regulation and fixing of fares, and to the planning of extension to the system. The project was called Metro Rail and was operated by a sister company of the former tramway company Meralco called Metro Incorporated. He also established the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA under the Department of National Defense to provide environmental protection and to utilize scientific knowledge to ensure the safety of the people. Furthermore, the reconstituted National Academy of Science and Technology was improved to Department of Science and Technology. Marcos saw the key to the nation building is the continued development of science and technology. The progress in science and technology continued even after his presidency, which left a legacy in this particular field.